Well, I think I always try and have an element of thinking about environment in my work. This is why I choose to try and find materials that I can repurpose to create my art. There's so much here already I can use. We're at the foot of the East Macdonald Ranges. You know, I call it J9's Paradise. In this studio, I've been working on collections for exhibition. And outside in the metal workshop, working on larger steel sculptures, which I mainly do for public art. My public artwork is known around town. There's a community garden gate and the tip shop Recyculator, and that's inspired by Sean Tan and uh, Dr. Seuss, the flood marker. So it's a stainless steel totem, and it talks about different years where we've had floods in Alice Springs. I have a level of confidence about what I can make, which is probably, you know, it's healthy. This is a um, 3D pen that's been drawn in lace patterns over my tools on my tool board. Well, it's called Feminising My Power Tools. The piece is dedicated to my father because he always encouraged me to, you know, go to art school and learn skills that anyone could learn, like welding or woodwork. And um, I took that on, so I kind of grew up not really knowing those gender barriers. I've done a lot of metal work, and it's a very hard medium. I've only got really three months of the year that I can work with it because it's so hot here. I was trying to find another medium that I can find to upcycle, and I just came across the fly mesh, and I just really loved it. I love the quality. I love the fact that it's translucent. Well, they're all really derived from the wave pattern in a similar way that waves form and crash and then just keep coming, but each one's slightly different with a different current behind it. <laughs> I've been standing back from them um, because I like to see them as that sort of thing floating in space. But when you do come up, you see the detail and the drawing that was there previously. I want people to sort of see that there's something underneath, something that you don't really notice first off. Yeah, I think my heart has been with the ocean for a long time. These patterns that I've been drawing here are all um, different patterns from phytoplankton. They're, yeah, they're really amazing looking things. Kind of glassy, but so tiny, but they're so intricate at the same time. Walking through the desert is kind of like being at the ocean, it's that same calming feeling where you don't have anything interrupting your eye. And when you're out there walking, you can find evidence of the ocean in the rocks and through those wave patterns, which I guess is from when this was an inland sea. It's amazing. <laughs> Living in Central Australia, when it rains, it's like God's gift. I have made a video of these play pans here, which when there is water, you can see the little waves on sunset forming because we have the clay in the water, unlike the ocean. So when you sit and watch this half hour video, it's a trippy meditation. <laughs> For me, being in the desert, it was all about the extremes, the harsh, the soft, the heat, the cold, the spiky, the fluffy. Uh, you know, you look around and you'll see 
spinifex grasses everywhere and from a distance they look so fluffy and soft when you get up they're really pointy and spiky it's just what the desert is and a lot of my work speaks of those extremes and opposites <laughs>